Hello, this is Hijo. From now on, I will introduce a paper Panoptic Team Lab. This paper was submitted on CBAPR 2020 and written by Google Research. It proposes a method to solve a Panoptic segmentation task, simple but powerful. So, I will explain briefly. Panoptic segmentation is unified task, symmetric segmentation, and instance segmentation. So, to solve this task, stuff and things are studied over. This paper is focused on solving the limitations of prior art. The authors tackled them and proposed a method to solve. At the time it was submitted, most of prior art are stick to top down method. For panoptic segmentation, prior art used instant segmentation network as main pipeline and attaching another semantic segmentation branch to it. So, instance and semantic segmentations are separate. One example is panoptic feature pyramid network, pipe. And this top-down method causes the following problems. First, overlapping the instance mask and pixel-wise semantic predictions. Second, the discrepancy between semantic and instance segmentation. Last one is slow speed, results from the multiple sequential process in the pipeline. From these problems, authors propose a new bottom-up method baseline, not top-down. Based on the time it was submitted, only few words suggest a bottom-up approach. But our method naturally resolved the conflict by predicting non-overlapping segments and improved the inference speed also. Panoptic lab is consists to bottom-up structure as shown, in the, as shown in the picture below. It has four main components, and the key modules of it are dual ASP and dual decoder. First of all, an input image goes to the encoder, and the encoder extracts a feature map. Some feature maps in the middle layer of the encoder are concatenated in the decoder loop for giving additional information. The feature map from the encoder is delivered to the dual ASPP model. ASPP is proposed method in GitLab, a prior study of the model. As shown in the following picture, the convolution layer operates as far as the predefined gap. That's how we can grow a receptive field of feature map. Panoptic Team Lab parallelizes these two ASP modules and decoder modules. These modules return information of semantic and instance segmentation respectively. And the previous features sent from the encoder are concatenated in the middle layer of the decoder. After that, the circuit features through the decoders are transferred to three prediction heads. The head on the top receives the decoder 1 feature and returns semantic segmentation value. The other head received a feature from decoder 2, and they return instance center prediction and insert center regression respectively. These two predictions, insert center prediction and insert center regression, are grouped with foreground mask, which is filtered out background from semantic segmentation. So the grouped one is returned to instance segmentation. Finally, semantic segmentation and instance segmentation are fused and extract panoptic segmentation predict. Authors did some operation studies on prior settings. From that, they chose one of these settings as optimal. Authors, authors conducted the experiment on three datasets, Cityscapes, MapCalory, Vistas, and Coco. On the Cityscape dataset, it shows uh, the highest accuracy and quality. And the other dataset, MapCalory, Vistas, and MS Coco, it shows comparable or higher accuracy and quality than SOTA algorithm. Especially, the author shows the end-to-end -end runtime performance of the proposed method is pretty good. This compared with two networks, Deeper Lab and US UPSNet, for panoptic, for panoptic semantic station task. Deeper Lab is consists as bottom-up manner and UPSNet as top-down manner. In conclusion, panoptic lab shows a definitely faster in first time than both networks and PQ values is also comparable. 어, 네, 지금까지 논문에 대한 소개를 마쳤고요. 해당 페이지의 논문의 저자들이 말한 디스커션과 결론입니다. 본인들이 한 바텀 메소드의 연구와 연, 그가 연구하면서 발견한 것들이 퓨처워크에 어떤 이사이트를 수 있는지에 대해 설명합니다. 그리고 그들의 방법론이 추후 연구될 파노틱 세그멘테이션을 위한 바텀 메소드의 솔리드 베이스라인이, 베이스라인이 될수 있음을 바랍니다. 그러니까 세그멘테이션과 디텍션을 연구하고 있지는 않지만 논문의 접근법에 큰 흥미를 느꼈습니다. 기존의 파노틱 세그멘테이션은 오브젝트의 띵지를 학습하기 위해 인스턴 세그멘테이션의 메소드를 기반으로 한 탑다운 방식을 고수했습니다. 
정말 해당 논문은 바텀업 방식으로 내일 학습할 수 있고 충분히 좋은 성능을 충분히 좋은 성능을 낼수 있음을 보여주었습니다. 이러한 방법이 디텍션에도 적용이 가능하다며 한 번에 바텀업 구조만으로도 성능을 낼수 있고 그만큼 빠른 속도의 디텍션 네트워크를 만들 수도 있지 않을까 생각을 합니다. 감사합니다. 헬로, 마이 네임 이즈 선인 킴, 앤 아임 어 마스터 코스 인 메카니컬 엔지니어링. 더 페이퍼 프리페어 디스 타임 이즈 러닝 투 세그먼트 에브리싱. 디스 페이퍼 에임 투 세그먼트 모어 오브젝트 베이스 돈 마스크 러션 앤 소 데이 트레인 더 모델 유징 스몰 마스크 어노테이션 데이터 데이 레스 디퍼 투 오프테인 앤 라지 박스 어노테이션 데이터 데이 데이 레스 레러터블리 이즈 투 오프테인. Here the mask annotation data is a COCO data set and there are 80 classes mask labels. And the box annotation data is visual genome data set and there are 3000 classes box labels. The contribution of this paper is two things. First, they use data of different labels through partially supervised learning. Second, to extract the mask of ob object, they propose the weight transfer function. First, partially supervised learning uses two kinds of datasets with different labels. One is a COCO dataset with annotated masks and they call it A. The other one is the visual genome dataset with only bounding boxes and they call it B. In this paper, they are referred to as strong label and weak label respectively. So this paper introduced partially supervised learning using two data sets. The algorithm proposed by applying this method is mask x rcnn which, which is an algorithm built on mask rcnn. At this time, the mask RCNN is divided into a box head and a mask head. So the method suggesting this the paper can be used. Let's get into the method they proposed. Actually, when predicting the mask, it uses a weight transfer function. First, if you you look at the structure of mask RCNN in the figure, the box head and the mask head are divided. Here, the box head can learning, learn using the bounding box label, so both data sets can be used. However, the mask head must have a mask label, so only the A data set can be used. So, this is called partially supervised learning. At this time, the last layer parameters of both sets contain category-specific parameters. So they propose the idea that mask can be predicted through the box parameter that is learned with two data sets. So they use the transfer function to calculate the mask, mask parameter from a box parameter. You can see the equation about that. In this time, the weight transfer function uses a small fully connected network. This is the main contribution of this paper. As for the training methods, stage-wise and end-to-end -end methods were suggested, but in the paper, end-to-end -end methods were applied. There are some different things, but it is not that important in this paper, I think. However, at this time, there is an imbalance of the gradient for each head because mask loss only uses a data set. So the gradient stops as follows. So the mask loss does not go to the box head, it only goes to the transfer function and mask head. Finally, the additional proposition is that FCN and, MP and MLP are combined in the mask head. In the mask RCNN, FCN and MLP were presented and compared, but in this paper, the two are combined. There are two, ty two types of combination. 
first class of agnostic FGN plus class class agnostic MLP. Second is class agnostic FGN and class specific MLP. At this time, the mask is obtained through the sigmoid after adding the two value ex expressed in the mask form from FCN and MLP. You can see that in this region. The experimental results are as follows. It is the results that various objects can be segmented through the methods proposed in the paper. In addition, the results expressed as an image is as follows. The top is the mask RCNN and the bottom is the mask X RCNN. The green box shows that the original mask label was present, which means classes in A. The green box and the red box does not have a mask label, which means classes in B. But it can be segmented using this algorithm. That's all for my presentation. Thank you. Oh, hello. My name is Kim Tun. I am and I am majoring in artificial intelligence. Uh, the topic I will present today is a paper called uh, Fanfic Feature Film Network. Uh, first of all, I will proceed with the presentation in the order of introduction, contribution, method, and experiment. Uh, first, uh, we need to know the fanfic segmentation to understand the contents of the thesis. Uh, the segmentation task is divided into two types. Uh, one is semantic segmentation and the other is instance segmentation. Uh, as you can see, semantic segmentation is augment object segmentation and objects of the same class are divided into the same area or color. In contrast, in contrast, uh, instance segmentation is divided into different instances, uh, even if they are the same class. Uh, lastly, fanfic segmentation is a uh, segmentation that performs these two tasks at the same time. Uh, the key contribution of this paper is to propose a network for fanfic segmentation. In this paper, uh, introduce the good network for fanfic segmentation using FPM backbone. Uh, the architecture proposed in this paper uh, is to add a semantic segmentation to the FPM backbone based, based uh, instance segmentation architecture. FPM is an architecture uh, that produces feature pyramid with various resolution of the input image. Uh, for more information, I recommend looking for a paper or blog. Uh, first, the instance segmentation is the same way that the mask RCNN uh, just change the backbone to FPN in this method. Uh, in this case of seg uh, semantic segmentation branch, uh, the feature map from the FPN uh, are of samples to a uh, certain size as shown in the picture. And the uh, semantic segmentation output is created through the element size summation and convolution. In this paper, just connect these two architecture to perform phonotic segmentation. Uh, the region for using FPM backbone uh, are said to be as follows. First, uh, it should be high resolution to capture detailed structure. And second, class level should be well predicted with sufficient semantics information. And lastly, uh, it must have multi-scale information to capture object various size. Various size. For this region, FPM backbone is mentioned in this paper as the best fit. 
Um, finally, uh, if you look at the result of the experiment, the uh, final peak segmentation use a performance evaluation indicator called PQ. The PQ are as follows, and if you want to know more about it, uh, I recommend you to read the paper published in the CVPR named Final Peak Segmentation. Uh, below, uh, the table shows the result of experiment on COCO dataset, and which shows that the performance is outstanding compared to the existing model uh, without additional techniques. Uh, in this paper, just to change the architecture. Of course, it has come down now. Uh, 결론적으로 이 논문에서는 FPN, FPN 이제 기반 마스크 RCN에서 시작해 이제 간단한, 어, 세멘틱 세그멘테이션 브런치를 더해가지고, 퍼너픽 세그멘테이션을 할수 있는, 어, 효율적인, 효율적인 이제 아키텍처를 제시를 합니다. 어, 이 논문이 이제 단지 아키텍처만 제시해가지고, 이제 2019년 이제 CVPR에서 논문이 게재가 되었는데, 아마 이때 퍼노픽 세그멘테이션 자체가 이제 처음 등장할 때라 주제 자체가 이슈여서 그냥 간단한 컨트리뷰션으로 아키텍처만 제시해도 논문에 게재될 수 있었던 것 같습니다. 지금은 어 제가 논문을 더 읽어보지는 않았지만 아마 지금은 이러한 아키텍처 제시만으로는 아마 지금은 더 이제 복잡한 방법으로 퍼노픽 세그멘테이션이 나와 있는 걸로 알고 있는데 그 부분은 이제 논문을 더 읽으면서 한번 봐봐야 될것 같습니다. 네, 이상 발표는 여기까지 마치겠습니다. 감사합니다. Hello, my name is Jung Ho Hong, and I'm gonna present about tensor mask. First, what is tensor mask, and what does it propose? Uh, the authors did not did not concentrate the specific domain issue, but try to build FPN like or Latina net like densely and pyramid pyramid shaped architecture with leveraging. For the tensors of shape V, U, H, and W. Since for the tensors is hard to imagine, we cannot understand the for the tensor directly. However, it is in fact just representing the tensors that the feature map consisting with pixels, and each pixels have a 2D mask array. So the each of pixels uh, in feature map have a 2D mask array, and consequently. Consequently, the total axis of our become becomes the four dimensional, and others have just treat or represented as four D tensor. They mainly propose three things. First is aligned representation. Aligned representation is like gathering mask values from tensors. Uh, the CHW shaped feature map. They should shape the channel C into B and U. So the V and U has constraints of multiple of them is equal to C. Then many 2D arrays are generated over each pixel, then they enumerated overlapping, overlapping value each 2D array shape of V and U. So consequently, the 1D tensor will be extracted from this stage. And to, to say simply, they just gathered overlapped value from reshape to the arrays, and which is equal to uh, get, gathering the corresponding index value from 2D masks. And the second is natural representation. It is simply computing one by one, one by one convolution operation to data, which is calculated from previous progress, and reshape it into 2D array. Then the pixel pixel wise loss would be computed between predicted mask and ground truth. We can easily treat y and x as the pixel index or the center coordinate of each mask value, uh, each mask, and uh, v and u sized each mask and uh, small v and u represent the index or offset of each mask value in the mask matrix. So entire flow getting feature map from uh, entire flow is first getting feature map from backbone network, and the second is the gathering mask with aligned representation, and the last is the reshape to the ma to the mask arrays with natural rep natural representation. 
The authors also proposed various operations to handle the size of 4D tensors. First, the downsampling. When they downsize lambda times to uh, feature map and then gather lambda times more the mask information, it means that uh, while gathering more coarser features, then they gathered more mask values from uh, for balancing parameters. It is similar to balancing the channel and the size of feature map in convolution neural network. However, this is this operation requires high high computational cost. So they implemented with C purple or Cyan to accelerate as possible as they can. And in fact, these these operations are very similar to general op operations with 3D tensors in general convolution neural network. And with operations amongst 4D tensors, they build RPN-like architecture to extract masks from a mask of each pixel. So the whole network extracts multi-scaled objects effectively and predicts the mask with the balance, balanced the parameters. Usually proposed operations for 4D tensors are, user, are used in the head, head part and the uh, general convolution operations are used in backbone. Finally, the overall architecture looks like this, and as you can see, the architecture is very similar to FPN. But the main difference is whether manipulating the shape of each mask. And the numerical result is in the table, and the test is proceeded with the MS Coco dataset. As you can see, the tensor mask was not performed over mask RCNN, but they but the, the tensor mask is, was first trial to uh, manipulating or handling in perspective of 4D tensors among instant segmentation projects. However, the tensor mask has three, has three main limitations. First is the, main, the method requires very high computational cost, which is the three times or five times more than mask machine. And the second is hard to interpret because we cannot easily imagine the fourth dimensional tensor. And the last is, last is uh, that model is easily output non gradients while training. So we can say that the design is not, not stable. 네, 일단 발표 맞췄고요. 그, 여기 이 마스크, 텐서 마스크, 텐서 마스크라는 게 인스턴스 세그멘테이션을 해결하기 위해서 마스크를 그 각각 피스에 배치를 하고 그 아, 2D 마스크들을 각각 피스에 배치를 하고 그 픽셀들은 그 2D 피처 맵의 구성 요소기 때문에 얘네들을 전체적으로 4D 텐서라고 그냥 이름 짓고 묶어서 얘네들 하나로 그냥 다룬 방법론을 제시를 한것 같은데요. 근데 얘네들이 이 모델을 실제로 이 모델이 페이스북의 기타브 기타브에 있는 그 디텍트런 2라는 그 코드 안에 포함되어 있는데. 이걸 실제로 돌려봤을 때, 트레이닝을 했을 때, 하나나 두개 GPU를 쓰면은, 어, 여덟 개 GPU에서는 학습이 잘 됐다고 얘기를 하지만, 한두 개나 뭐, 좀 적은 GPU를 쓰면은 학습을 할 때, 난이 되는 것을 확인, 난이 되는 것이 확인이 되었습니다. 그래서, 아마 전체적으로 모델이 좀, FPN을 잘 따라서 만들었지만, 좀 아직 언스테이블 하다는 것이 확인되었고, 이것에 대해서 좀왜 난이 되는지, 그리고 이걸 어떻게 하면 해결할 수 있는지에 대해서, 고민을 해보고 있습니다. 이상으로 발표 마치겠습니다. 네, 안녕하세요. 저는 인공지능학과 박사 과정에 있는 김지인이라고 합니다. 어, 저는 오늘 페이스북 리서치 팀이 작년 CVPR에서 제안한 Point When Image Segmentation as Rendering 이라는 논문을 소개해 드리고자 합니다. 어, 이미지 인스턴 세그먼테이션의 대표 모델인 마스크 RCNN을 만든 카이밍헌님이 어, 지도한 페이퍼이고요. 지금 여기 보시는 렌더링이라는 거는 샘플링과 인터폴레이션을 주요하게 많이 쓰는 컴퓨터 그래픽 쪽 기법이라고 합니다. 어, 그래서 저자는 이 기법을 이미지 세그먼테이션에 응용을 해서 어, 물체의 가장자리와 같이 세그멘테이션이 좀 어려운 부분을 포인트, 점으로 샘플링을 해서 좀 중점적으로 예측을 하는 포인트 웬드 기법을 제안하고 있습니다. 샘플링을 하기 때문에 연산량이 크게 증가되지 않으면서 또 정밀한 분류를 할수 있습니다. 그러면 발표 시작하도록 하겠습니다. 어, typical problems 
in image segmentation is computational cost. CNN operates with regular grids, so the computation is allocated uniformly. Output resolution is a trade-off between computational cost and level of detail. For example, a 7x7 seven seven output is very efficient, but the mask has almost no detail. So maybe different areas of the output mask might require a different level of detail. In other software like computer graphics, more, more efficient ways are commonly used. So inspired by them, the author proposes the implicit function approach. Uh, this is a quick slide describing the approach. So the point rent, the rendering part of that is some of these approaches inspired from computer graphics. Honestly, I don't know that much about it, but the author states that sampling and interpolation are used a lot in computer graphics rendering. So uh, it is an architecture that can develop mask where the training and inference is less computationally intensive because it uses samples of the points and the rest of them are calculated via interpolation. And upsampling, uh, which we will be explained later, it can generate higher quality, higher resolution label maps than a standard mask RCNN. So just briefly, let's review the proposed method. Point rent gradually increases resolution by making predictions for the most uncertain points, which are mostly boundaries. As you can see in the picture, the prediction is made by focusing on the boundaries. Then uh, let's take a look how point prediction is working. So it is a iterative process. It starts with upsampling. In this example, 4x4 four four grids upsampled to 8x8. It uses bilinear interpolation to come up with the initial values for each of the cells. Next, it identifies cells that are most different to neighbors, which mostly the boundaries again. It runs the point prediction using the coarse and fine grain. And then MLP gives up a mask at the 8x8 grid. So uh, through this iteration, the resolution increases and the accuracy of the mask increases as well. So here you can uh, see the architecture appointment. CNN backbone is used and uh, there are two unique components for the point estimation. First, there is coarse prediction that generates low resolution prediction and extracts a subset of most uncertain points. Second, there is fine grain feature that extracts a feature factor at each sampled point from backbone CNN feature map. It provides detailed feature information. Prediction for each selected point is refined using a lightweight MAP. So our experiment. On this slide, they compared standard mask CNN and mask RCNN with point rent. So as highlighted with uh, red arrows, we can notice that the boundaries with the point rent prediction are much sharper. Experimented with Coco and Cityscape's data set, point rent average press precision outperforms the standard mask RCNN, which is four times com uh, mask head. Higher output resolution leads to more detailed prediction. A ResNet 50 FPM backbone is used for this experiment, but the author indicates in the paper that point trend can be applied on top of any modern CNN-based model, even for semantic segmentation. In conclusion, this paper proposes a segmentation method which can make high resolution output with little to no computational overhead. Uh, you can check the code in Facebook research team detector on to GitHub. 이것으로 발표 마치겠습니다. 감사합니다.